where you can find us on Periscope, on Facebook, on Twitch and YouTube coming up here very shortly. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. My name is Patrick. I work at the Aquarium here in social media, and I'm joined this wonderful afternoon here on Kennery Row with my good friend and colleague, Emily. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Hey, thanks so much for being there, folks. Uh, we are going live right now because there's something very exciting happening here off of the back deck of the aquarium. That exciting thing is that you can see here we have a very low tide that is occurring. And this low tide is a premonition for what's gonna be happening tomorrow, which is the king tide. They both go together with this low tide, but then tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., if you folks are around, we're gonna go live another time to look at that big king tide. Emily, can you tell the folks that are tuning in? Hello, everybody tuning in. We got Gaming with Marco uh, on YouTube. We got Mary on Facebook. We got Salen and Callie on Periscope. Uh, Emily, can you tell us what is a king tide? Uh, right now, it is the second part of that king tide, maybe the less impressive one. But tomorrow <laughs> morning, we're going to have the king tide, the royal air to the ocean coming in. Tell us a little bit about what we're going to be seeing. There. Yeah, so king tide is actually a pretty new term. Uh, for what we are experiencing, but it just means that these are going to be the highest highs and the lowest lows of those tides of the year. So right now we're seeing one of the lowest tides of the year that we are going to see here in Monterey. It's about a negative one foot tide coming up at 4.04 p.m. local time, Pacific time. Uh, so just a couple minutes away, three more minutes away for us nice. is going to be the lowest tide that we're going to see here today. It's going to get a little bit lower than that over the next couple of days. Um, it's going to get to be about a negative 1.4 foot tide. Mm -hmm. um, that just means that it's negative 1.4 feet below sea level uh, that we are mm -hmm. seeing there. So that's what that number means. But again, that's going to be one of the lowest tides of the year. That's what that king tide means is that it's those highest highs, lowest lows. Right now we're seeing one of the lowest lows tomorrow morning, though, Patrick, like you said, is going to be the kind of the more exciting, more spectacular yeah. show when we have the highest highs of the year. So tomorrow morning around 9 a.m. is uh, when we're going to see that. Do you want to talk a little bit about what's yeah, happening there? Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, just I exactly what, what Emily was saying. The tides are essentially a global wave that travel around the planet. And here in Monterey, we have, uh, we have two high tides and two low tides every day. There's a low, low tide, there's a high, low tide, there's a low, high tide, and then there's a high, high tide as that wave goes around the planet. That wave is caused by the gravity of the moon first and the sun second. So the moon is really what's affecting the tides most of the time, but this time of year is when the sun and the moon's gravity are both mm -hmm. pulling on the ocean in the same direction at the same time. That's how you're gonna have that sloshing. Imagine yourself being in a bathtub. You can make that wave back and forth as you slosh back and forth. You can make the water go up and down. And the biggest moments when everything is converging is when you get those king tides. And exactly. um, yeah, and that, um, that level that you were mentioning, Emily, that uh, negative 1.4 and then that 6.4 six, uh, 6 foot that it'll be, um, that is based off of zero, which is the mean tide line. And it goes up and down from there. We usually have about a, a, uh, a just, you know, a six foot swing. This is going to be an eight foot swing uh, between the lowest low and the highest high, about seven and a half feet there, um, which, uh, you know, I'm six one. Uh, I believe you're I'm six feet, tall, six yeah. feet as well. Yeah. So uh, I, it's hard to imagine the ocean being a foot higher than me at the start of the day. And then six hours later, it's going to be six foot above uh, uh, or a foot and a half above me. So if I'm standing at the zero tide level, I would be underwater if I stayed there mm -hmm. with the king tide coming in. Yeah. yeah. And so like you were mentioning, Patrick, it's that position of the sun and the moon that's really pulling on the water all around the globe that's causing these king tides to be in effect. Now, we do get, you know, the high tides and low tides throughout the year, but what's happening right now is that tomorrow is the full moon. Yes. So we have mm -hmm. this big full moon that's in effect. That's when we really see these big high tides and these really low tides. 
Um, we also see that when it's a new moon out and you don't see the moon outside, uh, we get these big high tides and low tides. But right now, the Earth also just happens to be as close to the sun as it is going to be right. in its yep. orbit around the sun right now. So even though it, you know it's winter up here in the northern hemisphere, uh, we don't think like, oh, yeah, we're nice and close and toasty to that nice big warm mm -hmm. ball of a... Uh, of plasma in the sky there uh no it's it's we really are much closer to the sun than uh we will be throughout the rest of the year as uh we make that that orbit around yeah. our our big beautiful star exactly yeah so f for you folks out there uh you know the tides the the ocean uh and the stars they're intimately connected so uh for those of you wondering uh neil yeah 9 a.m pacific time tomorrow is going to be uh, the king tide. Nine and, uh, ten a.m. Yeah, and Very so we're specifically. Yeah. And so right now, folks, you are looking at the low tide for today. This is a negative one foot uh, high tide, low tide, excuse me. <laughs> and the high tide is going to be six point four feet, so seven point four feet up from what we're looking at uh, right now. And uh, one thing to note is that on the lower right here, here I'll just move the camera just ever so slightly. You can see over down on the right there, that is the exit of our great tide pool, which is actually the outflow for the aquarium's water. If you can see that pool there on the right, that tide pool is made by our outflow of water. And currently there's water pouring out of it into uh, the ocean. That is going to be completely submerged tomorrow morning. So there won't be any water flowing out there in that, in that little waterfall that you can see there. That's gonna be yeah under the sea level. And Emily, part of the reason that we wanted to show um, the king tides as we have the last few years is that, you know, we talk a lot about sea level rise. You folks out there may be familiar with sea level rise. It's what, it's what happens from a few different processes out there in the ocean. One is thermal expansion of the ocean. So just simply the ocean has absorbed a lot of heat energy due to climate change. Most of that heat energy is kind of hidden, but what it does do for uh, the ocean itself is that it, it makes the volume of the water just a little bit bigger. So if you heat up water in a vial, it's going to take up a little bit more volume as the molecules of water are dancing around excited. They kind of move away from each other. Yeah. And if you add that up over the entire ocean, you're going to have a lot of expansion of that water. And then there's a few other things happening that can raise that sea level. But those king tides, Emily, that is really the that's when we're going to get to see tomorrow kind of the future of sea level here along the coast yeah i always like to compare it to uh, if you think about yourself when you are you know cozy and warm you can stretch out you're dancing you're moving all around when you get cold yourself you kind of bundle up you get kind of cozy kind of tuck your arms in mm -hmm. that's exactly what these water molecules are doing so when they're colder they're closer together when they're warmer they're expanding they're taking up more space on the dance floor of the ocean uh so uh, that's exactly what we're seeing with that thermal expansion there and so what we're seeing with these king tides is kind of going to be what the future of the ocean holds with uh, right. with climate change yeah right exactly so it's not just adding water to the mix although that does happen with melting uh ice that we have on land uh just the thermal expansion of the ocean is is a big contributor to that sea level rise and so tomorrow morning again at 9 a.m we're going to be live again and you'll get to see sort of the future of what the aquarium is going to contend with right now we have uh an amphitheater in that tide pool uh that is able to uh, just barely not get splashed with these large uh, <laughs> king tides. And then if you add in some waves, if you add in boat wake, I mean, there's just a lot that can that can happen to come uh, and move up there onto the aquarium property. But something that we think about a lot here at the aquarium, because we are right there on the water, that sea level rise due to climate change is something that we have to think very uh, deeply about. And tomorrow's king tides are going to be a reminder of what exactly that means, because these king tides are going to be the mean the zero tide level uh in the future so that is uh that's something to do so for everybody who's tuning in right now take a look at this this is the low tide and tomorrow you're going to see the king tide the big tide 7.4 feet higher than it is right now as that global wave moves around and comes back and licks at the aquarium doors tomorrow yeah we're actually gonna uh see the second high tide uh, from this moment right, right now uh, right. because here in Monterey we get 
two high tides and two low tides every single day. So right now we're seeing this low, low tide around 1055 or so tonight. We're going to have another high tide, uh, but that one won't be quite as high as tomorrow's high tide. The, the high, high tide at, uh, at 910 a.m. is when that one's going to happen. So Patrick and I are going to be outside on the back deck checking that out. Um, of course, if you happen to be near the coast anywhere uh, and you want to help kind of keep track of what these king tides look like here in California, there is a project that you can lend a hand to a little bit of citizen science that you can do with the California King Tides Project. You can take pictures of what it looks like in your area, both at these low, low tides and those high, high tides and submit them to the California King Tides Project to kind of mm. uh, see what these tides look like around our state. Exactly. Um, that's a really great point there, Emily. There's so many things that you folks out there tuning in uh, can do to help scientists and help folks uh, study what's happening with our with our planet. When we did our live stream with the pyrosomes that were washed up on the beach or when the folks were talking about the fat innkeeper worms washing up on the beach. You folks out there, if you're ever at the beach, if you're seeing something, there's probably a project out there yeah. that you can contribute to. So if you see a jelly washed up on the beach, not sure what it is, head over to jellywatch.org uh, and you will be able to get your jelly cited by researchers. If you head over to iNaturalist, you can also get your animals uh, spotted, identified over there as well. And just like you said, Emily, with the king tides, there's a king tides project. If you see any flooding happening, like in the back of Elkhorn Slough, that wetland that we talk a lot about here at the aquarium where the sea otters go, Elkhorn Slough, the back end there where the railroad is and where the road uh, is, might get completely covered by uh, water. So if you happen to be out around in an estuary environment somewhere connected to the ocean and you see the tides taking a toll on anything, if you happen to be wading uh, in the water there during that high tide, those are important photos for uh, lawmakers, legislators, other folks to see so that they can understand the impact that the king tides will have on our coast on our coastal infrastructure so it's not just mm -hmm. a really cool oceanographic phenomenon where the stars and the moons are pulling on the ocean as we travel around the sun uh, it's also something right here down to earth uh, getting our feet wet with sea level rise and something that we have to contend with here as we go into the future so uh, yeah that's something you folks can think about is taking those photos and participating in that california king tides project. Yeah, we got lots of people tuning in from all these different places that we are live on right now. So just in case you are just tuning in right now, whether it's on Periscope, Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube. Hello, my name is Emily. I am part of the social media team here at the aquarium, uh, joining Patrick here this afternoon Hello. Uh, as we are checking out this low, low tide of the California King Tides. Well, I say California King Tides. It's <laughs> King Tides everywhere yeah. around the around the planet right now. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some friends tuning in over there on uh, yeah, YouTube. We got Twitch we got there. Neil over there. We got Paul and Sarah and Doodle over there on Twitch. Hey, we, everybody. We got, we, got we got folks that are tuning in over on YouTube as well. Uh, yeah, Neil, Miss Vita, this will be uh, happening all around. Uh, just in California is something that um, it's something that we are just going to be talking about here for the California King Tides Project, like Emily was mentioning. But uh, on the East Coast, the King Tides are already causing uh, areas to be flooded, like uh, in Miami and other other mm -hmm. zones there. So uh, certainly not new for folks living along the coast that these tides can do um, a lot there. Uh, but folks, uh, we didn't want to keep you too long because really right now, all, all we're going to see is the water kind of coming back up. Uh, we'll post a, um, we have a couple of time lapses of the king tides that we can, we can share with you yeah. folks. But the main thing is that we want to let everybody know who's watching right now, tune in tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going to be here at the aquarium off the back deck looking at uh, the water having risen 7.4 feet from where it is right now. So this is your preview. Remember this view, because when you see our tide pool completely submerged and a part of the Pacific Ocean, you'll see when the Monterey Bay Aquarium becomes uh, <laughs> the Bay Aquarium uh, for a few hours there with that high tide pushing directly into our facilities. Well, and we were chatting uh, a little bit earlier before we went live on stream here and we were commenting on it's a it's a pretty blustery day out there on the bay right Indeed. now we've got some swells coming in we've just had this uh, kind of storm roll through the bay here too so of course not only are we having those high high tides tomorrow morning uh, we might have some 
swell and some wind and stuff that makes those big waves even bigger. Exactly. So uh, it's not just the water level. You can imagine there's a lot of sloshing. You can have big waves that come in here along Canary Row. Every so often we'll have waves uh, that are several feet tall. So then you add that to the, the mean tide level. Again, those king tides, really something that we're thinking a lot about with sea level rise. Again, that sea level rise, not just due to water pouring into the ocean from on land, it's also due to thermal expansion where you heat up the ocean as we have been with climate change. That water is gonna expand as the water molecules get a little bit more energetic, start dancing around. Uh, and so that is something that we are going to be contending with. So, yeah. yes, did you have uh, anything else here, Emily? It's getting uh, a little bit dark yeah, here. Yeah, a little bit so darker out, out there yeah. right now. The One sun <laughs> is setting behind the <laughs> behind the hill there, so the sun is getting into position for tomorrow. But yeah, it's yes. getting ready for us. Uh, but one more thing to keep in mind, if you are out along uh, any coast over the next couple of days, um, just be careful, be mindful, always keep your front Facing the ocean, never turn your back on the ocean because we do have these big king tides happening and uh, you might have large swells rolling through your area. That can be a very dangerous combination. Uh, so just make sure that you're being safe out there as well um, while we have these king tides happening. Exactly. Okay, well, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in to this special pre-broadcast of the king tide that will ha be happening tomorrow. Uh, this has been Patrick. And this has been Emily. And we totally prepared that <laughs> sign yeah. off right there. We will see you again soon here at the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Signing off for now.